Hi, I'm James the Box Office Artist and welcome to another episode of Ask the Artist. This is the finale of my uh, Fan Expo Canada series where I interviewed a lot of artists there. And I hope you all enjoyed it and thank you all for the amazing feedback that I got for all of the artist interviews that I have uh, done so far. And here is the last one and as you read in the title, this is uh, one of... Um, well, one of my favorite artists, his name is Greg Land, and uh, he has been an artist for quite a long time, and uh, he actually has been an inspiration of mine, uh, you know, as I tried to work through this crazy business, and he's still going strong to this day, still a top artist at Marvel, and he has some really interesting stories to tell us for today, so I'm really excited to bring you this interview with my man, Greg Land. Hi, I am here with legendary comic artist and one of my influences it is Greg Lands. How are you today, Greg? Oh, I'm doing fine. Having a great weekend here in Toronto. Fantastic. We're so happy to have you here. I'm so happy actually meeting you for the first time here this weekend. Are you cool. sure? Uh, for those of uh, my viewers who don't know who you are, can you please uh, tell us what are the things that you are working on right now? Uh, currently on Uncanny X-Men and uh, soon I'll be working on a kind of a it was a top secret project until they announced it just the other day, but it's uh, something called Monsters Unleashed, and it has to deal with uh, a lot of the classic Kirby giant monsters. So looking looking forward to doing that. Oh, we're, we're looking forward to seeing it too. That sounds amazing for sure. Have you started the, working on that book already? No, no. I've been busting trying to get these last bits of the uncanny stuff done. Then I came up here. Now I got to go back home and bust to finish a book. And then I think I'll be doing starting on some of the monster stuff. Well, if you need help, I can finish those X-Men issues for you, and then you can go on. But <laughs> I'll give you a you help, help I can give you. <laughs> there, there you go, for sure. Now, uh, like, you've had uh, a pretty long career in comic books. How, how long have you been working in comic books? A uh, little over 20 years. I think my first published piece was in 95, so that meant, you know, around 94 is when I really got going on comic books uh, it was like i was kind of late getting into comics always wanted to do it but i was in the screen print business which i started straight out of college and so i was approaching 30 years old and i was like well if i'm ever going to do this comic book stuff you know i need to really try and break my way into it because like i had done a few sample submissions a long time ago like straight out of college and got you know the the polite thank you uh letters but uh so yeah it was kind of a, a coming of age you know almost 30 years old i'm like well if i'm ever gonna do this i think i better try and so i started getting some uh made my own little portfolio of uh comic book stuff not the screen print stuff because obviously when you go to a show the editors don't want to see you know that type of artwork so i you know just put together a, a quick portfolio and started going to shows Okay, fantastic. So tell us, tell us, how did you develop uh, that personal portfolio? Like, what did you do to, you know, put it together? Oh, I just started out by doing a few pinups, but then, you know, I, I knew that they would want to see panel-to-panel -panel stuff. So I just did a quick uh, three-page story of a fight between Iron Fist and the Punisher. Could you uh, do, like, a brief synopsis of your career, like, from when you started? Well, I, like, I'll just kind of go back to the my first gigs i mean i got a couple of things with a small press company called sky comics and by doing that i was able to show that artwork and it parlayed me into getting some stuff with uh, dc then i did uh that did a nightwing mini series and about the third issue of the fourth uh fourth issue of that mini series i was diagnosed with testicular cancer so while i was finishing up the last issue of that i was working my 48 hour a day job or 40 hour a week job doing screen print then i would go take radiation treatments for the cancer then i'd come home and work on the stuff at night so literally like for six months i was working 80 hours a week trying to get uh between the two jobs and and everything and then the day i finished my last page of that issue four of that nightwing mini uh, was my last day of treatments and so then I just decided to take some time off and, you know, start feeling better again and just work my regular screen print job. So then about a year later, I started getting that itch, you know, I'm wanting to do some comic book stuff and, you know, give this a go again. And unfortunately, my editor was no longer there at DC. So I literally went back to shows uh, once again up in Chicago and spoke to some other editors that were at DC that remembered my work. 
and fortunately they gave me a project and I've been doing comic books ever since then. So I actually broke in the business twice. <laughs> Oh, fantastic story. You see, all of you don't have an excuse. There's not enough time. <laughs> this guy here, Brady, you should be regular job and did a monthly book. Look at that. Just be tenacious. Be, be stubborn, too. <laughs> stubborn and tenacious. Like, what sort of advice would you give, like, an artist if they ever came to you and showed you your portfolio today? What, what kind of things would you tell them? You know, I, it's just, you know, some people talk about developing a style or this or that. I don't really think about that kind of thing as much as it's like, you know, work on your storytelling, you know, try and figure out different angles that you want to use on, on your particular page, but vary that same page up so that you, like if it's got five panels, don't make all the figures the same size. You want to have contrast, like, you know, some would be a close-up, some would be a distance shot. Just the same type of thing that you would see when you're going to a movie or watching a show on TV, you know. You see all kinds of different angles, and so I like to incorporate that stuff as well. Mm, fantastic, fantastic. Well, you'd be the guy to ask this. Um, very simple question. What's it like to work at Marvel, <laughs> especially on a next gun book, for sure? Uh, it's great, man. I, when I was a little kid, this is what I wanted to do, was draw comic books. You know, all my uh, old sketchbooks were full of, you know, me drawing, you know, imaginary superhero fights, that kind of thing. And, you know, I was fortunate enough, I got some good breaks along the way, and and I'm able to make my living doing this. Fantastic, fantastic. Like I always say, it, it beats having to go get a job. Man. So, <laughs> so I want to I want to thank all the, the people out there that buy my books. I really appreciate it, and my wife really really appreciates it. Is <laughs> Marvel like a really particular when it comes to the way you portray uh, certain characters, or have they given you freedom to? Uh, I mean, you know, in terms of like. The facial features, you know, I, I kind of do things my way. You know, I, I like to have a lot of different show expressions. Uh, and so, you know, when they hire me, they know the type of things I'm going to do. I mean, you know, they obviously want you to follow uh, certain costumes. You know, you don't go, go changing that up unless they want you to redesign something. But, yeah, I mean, so, you know, they offer me a project, you know, they design that because they, they know the type of things I can bring to it. I don't want to keep you long. I know you have plenty to catch. You're finishing yeah. up the show. But uh, well, before we go, like again, a lot of my viewers are aspiring artists. So what what kind of advice would you give to them if they are trying to break into the industry today? Uh, yeah. You know, back when I did it, you know, you could go to the cons and, you know, editors would be there. Uh, I don't know exactly how it plays out nowadays in terms of that. I know I spoke with one Marvel editor this weekend. He said he was here doing portfolio reviews. But I don't know if you had to set something up ahead of time or if that was done here at the show. But, you know, one way or the other, you, you would have to get your work in front of editors so that they could see it. And, you know, if you can't get in with the big companies right off the bat, working small press stuff is, is a good thing to do because it gives you practice. And the more you do this, the better you're going to get. And so you can, you know, take those things and show the editors down the road. And then even if you've got your name in front of them, and you show them something else down the road, they can see the progress you've made. And they're like, hey, this guy's serious. You know, he's not just here trying to get something. He's willing to put the work in and, and work hard. You know, that that's that's one of the main things is, you know, this stuff is hard work. You know, it's a lot of fun, but it is hard work. And you do put in a lot of time, a lot of time. You know, I'm always realistic with my deadlines when, when you know, editors, you know, if they say, can you get it done by this time? You know, if I can, I say yes. If, if I know I can't, I'm not going to lie and say, yeah, I'll do it just so I get the gig. You know, I'm going to be straight up with them, and they, they appreciate that. Um, you know, you have to be hard on yourself. You know, show that discipline. And, you know, in fact, it, I suppose it may even be harder to stay in the business once you've broken in because, you know, then you're, you're only, the old saying, you're only good is the last thing you did. So you got to keep, you know, like being your harshest critic and, and pushing yourself so that you improve constantly. So thank you very much, Greg, for, for your time today, yeah, spending a few pleasure. minutes with us. So, so before we go, where can our viewers find and follow you on uh, social media? Uh, I, I am actually off the grid. <laughs>
<laughs> well, you can find them right here on youtube.com slash the box office artist. Thank you so much, Greg, for making Thank you so much to Greg Land for the fantastic interview. I really enjoyed that. And especially hearing that part about when he was talking about how he had cancer and everything and how he still worked on top of that. Like, you hear a story like that and you say to yourself, what's your excuse? Why are you not working hard? Why are you not meeting your deadlines when you hear something like that? So thank you so much to Greg. Good luck with your future Marvel projects. They all sound fantastic. And I want to thank all of you for, for following along with these uh, artist interview series. Now, I do have a lot of um, interviews lined up. As I mentioned before, I have some that I've already filmed. I have some on the go. So I will probably release them once I'm all done filming all of them. So look out for those starting in the new year. I'll probably start releasing them in the new year, uh, probably a weekly series. But until then, we will replace this segment with an actual question and answer series. So this is where I'm going to answer your questions. A lot of you have been leaving questions uh, on all my videos and I would love to answer all of them. But as you guys know, I'm an extremely busy guy. I'm, I do my best to answer you when I can. Uh, honestly, if, if, you, if I just upload the video and you answer right away, usually I do my best to answer right away, but especially the past video. So um, I'm going to do a very specific question and answer type video where I will specifically answer your questions that you leave on all my videos. So if you leave a question on one of my videos throughout the week, uh, these Ask the Artist segments, this is where I will try to answer as many questions as I can. So thank you all for following me along. A big thank you to my man, the Z-Man, for uh, editing all these videos for me. He has done a fantastic job and will continue to do editing for me uh, for all these Ask the Artist videos. Thank you so much. And anyone you want to see me interview, please do let me know down below. I would love to hear it. And again, look out there for that next year. And thank you guys for following along. It means so much to me. My name is James. I'm the box office artist. I'm here to say keep drawing, and I'll see you all next time.